folks. Welcome back to Toxic Cafe. I'm here at the New York Comic Con 2012 and I'm here with Mr. Judd Ehrlich. There's a movie out right now with Ben Affleck called Argo, but what you don't know is there's another backstory behind that thing ever even got started. Judd, welcome. Thank you. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit of what's going on with it? Sure, sure. Yeah, we are uh, now raising money on Kickstarter to finish a film called Science Fiction Land. Uh, today, actually, Ben Affleck's film Argo is opening, and this is a film that we have been working on for years prior to the Affleck film. Um, and the backstory was really the most interesting story to me. It involves the king of comics, Jack Kirby. For people who don't know, he's the creator of the X-Men, the Avengers, the Fantastic Four. He's really the reason we're here at Comic-Con today. He, he basically saved the comic industry. Sure. So, uh, in, incredible character um, who unfortunately is not featured in Argo, but uh, is heavily featured in our film. Um, and we have a lot of other characters um, in the backstory. The script was basically, um, it's a very complicated story, let's say, but the, the script came from a best-selling science fiction novel called Lord of Light, written by Roger Zelazny in the late 60s. Um, somebody named Barry Geller bought the rights, the movie rights, to make a, a movie of, of Lord of Light. It was going to be the biggest science fiction film ever. Along the way, this dream turned into an even bigger dream to create the biggest theme park in the world to be called Science Fiction Land, which is the name of our film. Barry was able to get uh, Jack Kirby involved. He was able to get Buckminster Fuller, Ray Bradbury, um, and the makeup artist John Chambers. Turned out uh, that John Chambers was not only working for Barry on the science fiction Lord of Light project, he also worked for the CIA in making disguises. John Chambers won the Academy Award for the original Planet of, of the Apes. So um, he was very good at what he did, and the CIA liked to find the best people to work with. So he was the person who took the Kirby designs, uh, Barry's screenplay for Lord of Light, and gave it to his contact, Tony Mendez, at the CIA. Tony Mendez is the character that Ben Affleck plays in our um, so you wouldn't hear about this story in Argo, but it was really what drew me to uh, make this documentary, uh, which really began uh, in 2000. All right, now, so now, I've heard some backstories to this, so please confirm if I'm right or wrong, that in this whole thing, uh, they were buying up land for this amusement park, and there were some jail time served and some things that happened. Could you kind of elaborate more on that, if it did or did not happen? Yeah. I mean, basically, this all culminated that they had sighted science fiction land in Aurora, Colorado, of all places. Um, and Jack Kirby, John Chambers, Barry Geller, Jerry Schaefer, who was involved as a producer, um, and the football player Rosie Greer for a little star power, boarded a plane in Hollywood and left for Aurora, Colorado for the big press conference to announce science fiction land. Um, this was the biggest thing that Aurora had ever seen. They thought that they were going to be the next Anaheim. I mean, this was Disneyland comes to Colorado. Um, but yes, everything went, went down very dramatically. The, the mayor of Aurora, half the city council, there were uh, land deals, water deals, um, all sorts of things that were going on. Um, Basically, uh, uh, unbeknownst to Barry Geller, who was the founder of all of this, um, and the craziest thing is that it was only about a week later, um, after the downfall of Science Fiction Land, that Tony Mendez, a CIA, CIA agent, took Lord of Light, renamed it Argo, and took the Kirby drawings and flew to Tehran and successfully got six Americans out of Tehran and brought them back home, using the work that that the science fiction land team had done. So yeah, it's a, it's a remarkable story. Yeah. So it's just kind of coincidental that all of a sudden they got in trouble and then the CIA uses it. I mean, it's not like that never happens in our entire history of this country. Yeah. But now did Jack Kirby ever know that his plan and his process of everything saved all these people? It's a great question. Uh, it's one that we haven't talked a lot about, but it does come up in some of the interviews for the film. Uh, there are some people who um, have certain information um, about Kirby that raises questions about was he involved as Chambers was involved in it. 
Um, and there are also other questions raised about um, did the C about the timing and, and did the CIA want their cover to be free and clear? So did they want the project buried before they took off? We're, uh, you know, it's it's something we don't talk a lot about. It's something we're researching further. Right. Um, and uh, it's, it's another twist to this story that really uh, at every turn is just um, stranger than any fiction film. And, and the fact that Argo is coming out is is wonderful because there's a lot more interest in this story now. Um, but it's also another twist to it because it's again another sort of somewhat fictionalized account of these events. So a lot of the film is about what is real, what is not, what's the line between art and reality, truth and fiction, and um, you know, it's a great story. It's a great story. All right, awesome. Well, it was great meeting you. Thanks so much. And everyone, make sure you check out Science Fiction Land. Thanks.